Welcome to Linux in the Shell, Episode 6, P-Mount Command. My name is Dan Washko. I'll be your host tonight. And before we get rolling, remember this is basically just the examples of using the P-Mount Command. Uh, for the full write-up, head over to linuxintheshell.org. And also, thank you, Hacker Public Radio, for your support. All right, P-Mount Command. By default, P-Mount will mount just about any removable block device you put at it. Should you not, a device not be a removable device? Well, I'll show you how to figure that out. I'll also show you how to figure out whether a device, what the device is to be mounted. Notice I, I issued the mount command there, and it shows you all the devices that are my file system right now as it is. Uh, we're going to come back to that in just a minute. Now, I just plugged in my clip zip, and what that is going to do I'm waiting a second because I'm going to show you how to determine where that uh, what the devices are that that can be mounted once that's plugged in issue the dmessage command and right there you will see coming back that it detected a device file system at SDB and also detected the flash card in there mount as a mass storage device at SDC with a partition of SDC1. So those are the two devices that I can mount with the pmount command. So if I were to just issue pmount dev SDB, hit enter, doesn't really say anything, but you know it's successful because if it wasn't successful, it would have complained at you. Devices get mounted in media, so I see a media, SDB, LS media, SDB, and it's it's in there it's mounted now if I issue the mount command again I will now see that it's mounted down here with the mount command but I could do the same thing with P mount I can issue the P mount command by itself and it will tell me all the mounted devices from P mount right there it is alright so if I did P to mount, unmount a device use PU mount DV SDB just like you did before now if I issued a P mount command again you will notice there are no mountable devices that are mounted with the p-mount command. Uh, it also tells me I can run the p-mount with dash h to get the help. Now I said it remounts removable devices so how do you determine that? Very simply cat system the block device sdb oh wait system block the block device sdb and removable it tells me one. So if I did LS sys block. You see there are a number of block devices I have in there. If I did SDB, you see a bunch of uh, option uh, files in there, some information. So when I do cat dev S uh, SDB for um, removable, right there, it's a one. If I were to do cat sys block SDA removable, it's a zero. I could not use P mount on there um, right now. Now, I'll do the last one, cat, sys, block, sdc, removable, and yes it is. And then finally, sro, removable, and yes it is. That's my DVD drive in there. So I can, I can use s, I can use p-mount with all those removable devices right out of the box. Otherwise, I would have to specify uh, the Etsy p-mount allow file which is a whitelist and def define devices I want in there. Now it used to be in the old command uh, you used to have to define the devices in there which is a holdover from what I did here. You could also specify devices like this SDB123 which have achieved the same thing in there but if, as long as it's a removable device it's not already mounted it's not an F stab you should be able to mount it just fine. So notice before when I mounted it I issued P mount dev sdb and it mounts it in the media as the device name. I could also execute this pmount dev sdc1 and call it clip zip card and now it's media if I look under media it's clip zip card and it's not under sdc the mount point exists that's from a previous mounting but it's not there so if I unmount it dev sdb and PU mount. Uh, I don't think you can unmount it this way, can you? Just like mount, you can. You can specify the mount point, just like you could in mount. 
to the PU mount command. Remember, two important things when you mount, after you're done mounting the device. Always unmount it before you take it out. And the second important thing is always unmount or you mount before taking device out. That's really important because you can hose your flash file system uh, by doing that. So P mount command, very, very, very simple, very cool command. Um, P mount, there are some options. Most of the time you are not going to use them. P mount help, you can look at the different options in there. By default, if you notice when I mount something, P mount dev sdb and I issue the pmount command again it shows me right here these are the default options that it's mounted with read write uh, no execute that means I can't execute any files off of there good thing the u mask uh, d mask f mask you, I'll cover u mask in just a second um, you can change some of those options in there if you uh, look at the pmount H, so you can actually mount it read only or write synchronize this is this one right here do not mount a flash device with sync option uh, it will take forever to perform any operations on it so so those are the important things right there um, let's unmount that and call it a day P mount uh, I said I talk about you mask um, the default U mask of any device that you mount is uh, 022 for a Linux file system. So uh, dev SDC1, CD media SDC1. Uh, if you look in here, if I issue U mask, uh, it's 0022. What that actually equates to is files equal 666 minus 022, which equals. Uh, file system of 644, which equals read, write, read, read, like that. Now it's going to throw me an error. I shouldn't do that. So if I do touch me, do an ls me, read, write, whoa, oh, very good, very good, very tricky, very good that it caught me on that. Uh, the U mask here, default U mask for a a Linux type file system, ext23 and stuff, is 022. So if I go back to my home directory and do touch me and do an lsl me, okay, you got rewrite, read, read. Okay, so going back to uh, this thing, default for file system. Now notice the file system is VFAT for VFAT and NTFS is is uh six zero zero. Is it not? Yes. No, no, yeah. Six zero or I'm sorry, zero seven seven is the default for UMAS. And you say, well wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense because six 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 minus set zero seven seven equals a funky number. Well, once it gets down to, you know, negative 1 is the same thing as 0 in this case. So the file permissions, as you saw here, for LSL me, are actually read-write and nothing for anybody else. So RM me. And now if I were to do uh, make dir test LSL, test is now read-write executable. So remember, for a directory, umask is 777 minus umask. So 777 minus 6 or 022 equals 755, which equals read, write X for a user, uh, read X, and read X for a general user. But in this case right here, it's uh, seven, uh, 077, so it means that users, other than the owning user, it's a file permission of, they don't have any permissions at all. So I'm going to remove test. So if I go back here and I do make their test, I already exist. Make, well, LSL test, you notice with the file permissions um, are read, write, read, read. So my UMask is 022. So if I do make their test 2, LSL test 2, oops, LSL D test 2. Rewrite so the default permissions on there are now 
read, execute, read, execute. Remember, for directories, execute bit means they can actually go into the directory and look at stuff in the directory, not execute stuff in directory. So again, that's the pmount command with some extras thrown in there. Uh, remember, when you mount something, unmount it with the pmount command, and there you go. Thanks a lot. Have a happy uh, two weeks. We'll see you in another two fortnight for some more uh, Linux in the shell. Shout out to Hacker Public Radio. Please listen to Hacker Public Radio, and if you want, contribute. They're always looking for contributors. And uh, have a happy day. Thanks.